Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite voice of Nightmare speaking. Sorry for the bad audio, my roommate is running water. So, tonight we're going to be going down that good old-fashioned list of god-awful creepypastas. Yeah, the ones that smell less than fresh, the ones that remind us all of Sonic Tarexi. So, let's get started, just for fun. It was an August afternoon. A teenage boy named Roland... The fuck names their kid Roland? Never mind, let's keep going was sitting in his bedroom playing a video game. Roland was trying to get in the most gaming hours, in the most gaming hours, was trying to get the... in the most gaming hours before school started up. Um, I don't know, wouldn't you say um, something like was trying to get the most amount of hours before school started? I don't know. I don't know, the sentence doesn't sound right at all. So, we've already uncovered our first problem. Get in the most gaming hours before school started. Up again. In the fall. So, why not you just say he wanted to spend most of the summer playing video games before, or spend most of his time playing video games in the summertime before the fall started or something like that. Why the f Never mind. Just like any normal gaming teenager, his birthday was coming up soon, but he didn't care. He was never big on birthdays, although this year was different. There was one particular game that caught his fancy. It was called Simply You Decide. He doesn't know why he liked it so much. He just wanted it. He had been begging his stepmom for the game, but she said no. Not until his birthday. So he waited, playing the same games over and over. Good God, why don't you, like, go outside or something? Fuck. Oh, good Lord. Even, even me as a hardcore gamer, when I was a kid, I would still go outside to do something, you know? Uh, never mind. He played for a couple of hours, not wanting to stop. He got a call from his friend, Daryl. Daryl asked if Roland... Oh god, these people have the worst names. Daryl, okay, Daryl's normal, but Roland? The fuck names the kid Roland? I can't get over the name Roland. Reminds me of Kelly Roland. Ugh. Could come over at that second. <laughs> Yeah, like, that's physically possible. Like, he's just going to teleport through time and space. Roland was startled at the question. The demanding tone of Daryl's voice was out of character. He decided it was important, so he turned off his Xbox and ran out the door. He grabbed his keys off the top of the entertainment center and yelled, I'll be back later, Mom! And mom probably, nah, that's not in. And ran out the door. He didn't know why he was in such a rush. Um, uh, maybe because his friend came over and sounded like he was worried about something? Like, how do you not understand why you're rushing to something? Like, you know why you're rushing to go somewhere. Oh, bad. Thank you, Maurice, for turning off the fucking water. Ugh. He brushed it aside and assumed he was... Jittery from his birthday, which hasn't happened yet. And about the new game. He got in his car and put the keys in. He then drove to Daryl's house. Okay, first off, if he's got a car, this... I would automatically assume that this kid has some kind of currency. He's got money on him, meaning he's probably working a part-time job somewhere. If he's doing that, why the hell is he waiting for his mother to go buy him the video game when he can just do it himself? Never mind. He arrived soon after departing from his house. He walked up to Daryl's house and rang the doorbell. He liked Daryl's house. It felt so much comfier and home-like to Roland than his own home. Comfier is not a fucking word. Read. 
Darrow arrived at the door, looking very excited. Roland said, Hi! But Darrow just grabbed his arm and pulled him up, him upstairs to his room. Okay. He threw Roland into Darrow's gaming chair. <laughs> oh, fuck. What? He turned around and searched for something. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, that's bad. Oh, that just, that just came out wrong. I said hello, Roland said, jokingly. Oh, hey, Daryl said, continuing to search. Aha, Daryl said. He pulled out an a Xbox game. A Xbox game box from his dresser. You fucking idiots. An Xbox, an a Xbox game box. English is not this person's first language. I don't care what people say. That, that, that's, that, that's bad grammar. From his dresser, and let's back to the story now. Roland read the title and said, and it said, You decide. Roland's jaw dropped. His eyes turned wide and he, he stared at Daryl. You got the game? Ronald, that, no, 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 Roland. He doesn't. That, that, that's a mirage you're seeing. <laughs> Roland said, hardly able to make out the words. Mm -hmm. Fuck, this is badly written. And you're gonna play it with me, Daryl replied, grinning. Then why are we just standing here? Put in the game, put the game in. All right, jeez, Daryl said. He popped open the disc box. And out the disc in the console, Daryl handed Roland the second controller. Okay, never mind. Once the game started up, they chose two pl they chose two player. No. They chose two players. Fucking idiots. And got ready for the time of their lives because pfft, yeah, because their lives are fucking pathetic. The first thing to do was to enter both their names in. Why not say, uh, that, that, that's bad, not, well, one more thing for bad grammar. They entered their names in and hit start. Oh, fuck, Why, what was the point of adding that? A long list of warnings popped up. Daryl and Roland decided to ignore them and hit start. They were put into a 3D world. It looked so realistic. It was... Almost a movie, like every other video game that you'll ever play in today's generation. Their first mission was to enter a city called Albert City. Hey, that's where we live. Oh, well, we already know where this is going, Roland said, looking amazed. Maybe the designer was from here, Daryl suggested. Okay, if you have a video game that's released on the Xbox, I'm assuming this is the original Xbox because they're not calling it the 360, they're not calling it the Xbox One. To make a game that would have been suitable to be released on that system, you would have multiple developers creating this. Like, how is it that they came to the conclusion that it was only one guy? And to make a video game that looked like a real, looked realistic enough to be like real life. Ugh. They walked their character into the, they decided that was the case and continued on. They walked their character into the town, not having done anything yet. Just rolling with her. And they reached the middle of town. A choice pop up. It read, which side of town do you wish to go? Left, right. You go left, I'll go right. Deal, Daryl said, holding his hand out for a solemn promise. Deal, Roland said, shaking his hand. Why is that a big deal? Daryl chose the right option button, and Roland chose the left. The screen went black. Then they reappeared in the center of the side they chose. 
A large butcher's knife popped onto the screen. Press A to equip. It said, They both pressed A, a large knife on the bottom right hand. Roland started pressing the character onward, but it would not go. He said, Why won't mine go? Mine neither, Daryl said. They both realized they had to press A to begin. Feeling stupid, which they should be, they pressed A and started going forward. They walked all around the streets, seeing familiar buildings identical to the ones on the side of town they were on, and they don't give any description. Oh, okay, they do. Roland entered an old knitting shop and walked up to the clerk. The clerk screamed and started to run. Roland pressed A and made his character grab her hair. She kept screaming and crying, saying, Please don't kill me, please. Roland had two options. He could press X and kill her. Or B. And let her live. Oh, let's make the prediction, 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 prediction. He presses the X button. Roland pressed X. Ah, how did I know? Just to see what happens. Uh, she gets stabbed with the butcher's knife, I assume. The butcher's knife came up to the lady's throat, pressing it against her throat. Oh, of course, why the fucking... Why have they got to mention the same thing twice? I don't know why. The knife cut through her neck like a hot knife on butter. It wasn't an amazing kill, but it was just the graphics alone made Roland admire the game like it was a god. Yes, because, you know, God is pixelated. <laughs> he turned to Daryl and gave him a high five. Look, Roland, Daryl said. Roland looked to Daryl's screen and was shocked. It's my house, Roland said. I'm gonna go inside, Daryl said. Pressing the person forward, Roland kept on doing what he was doing, going into different shops, killing the customers and clerks. Roland heard a scream from Daryl's side. He looked over and saw his mom. His mom was screaming, begging for mercy. Daryl showed none. He used the new weapon he had found to kill and killed her. Dude, you just killed my mom, Roland said. Relax, it's not real. Maybe it was just someone who looked like your mom. Plus, the inside of this house looks nothing like the inside of your house, Daryl defended. True, let's keep going. You know, I don't care how well a video game is designed. I would be kind of a little fucked up if they were able to get so much, the, the details so well done that they were actually able to put my own mother into the fucking game. Like, I'd be asking, wait a minute, who the hell do we know that owns this fuck, that made this shit? Do we know anyone who could make video games? I'd be asking questions. Let's get back to the story. True, let's keep going. Around 8.30, Roland decided it was time to go home. Daryl said, we'll play some more tomorrow. He paused the game and saw there was no save option. Just keep your Xbox on so it won't delete our progress, Roland suggested. Sure. We'll see ya. Bye, Roland replied. Roland grabbed his keys out of his pocket and put them in the ignition. He pulled out of the driveway and went on home. There were cops all over the town. Roland thought it was a bit odd, but decided to let the police handle it. Of course, because he can't legally fucking do anything. It's stupid fucking people that write this shit. Alright, back to the story again. Roland pulled into his driveway, surprised to see that none of the lights in the house were on. He parked his car and got out. He started for the door but heard a loud breathing. He was frozen in place. The heaviness of the breathing was terrifying. Very hesitantly, he opened the door. He looked around the living room and didn't see anyone. The TV was turned on to Friends, his mother's favorite show. Mom? Roland shouted. All he heard was heavy breathing. 
He grabbed the gun from the secret hiding spot. He slowly climbed up the stairs to his mother's room. He kicked the door open and pointed the gun. His mother was not in there. He went back downstairs and crept up to the kitchen. He slowly opened the door, hoping that his mom was in there. She was. Roland's stepmom lay decapitated on the floor. If she's decapitated, how is she... Bru Where's the breathing coming from? He rushed over to his mother's corpse. He dropped to his knees and looked at her. He started to cry, but soon sadness turned to anger. He stood up and fired the gun into the wall, because he's a fucking moron. He looked where he had fired. In blood, red letters, the words, You decided, were on the wall. Oh, fuck off. Sorry. Sorry uh, about that. That was just a update thing. We're on the wall. He was confused, but as he finally started to put the pieces together, which any moron at this point would be able to do, he heard the heavy breathing right on the back of his neck. Okay, so it's his friend, Daryl. He turned around. The pure white face was staring at him. Not smiling, not blinking, just staring. Roland grabbed the gun and aimed it at the person. Did you do this? Roland shouted. No response. Answer me, Roland said. Still no response. Roland shot the gun right at the person's head. The person didn't even flinch. He just kept staring. Breathing heavily, Roland dropped the gun and said, What are you? I'm Daryl, it said. It lifted its arm up and swung a large butcher's knife at Roland. It hit Roland's neck and went right through, no resistance. Daryl's house. Yeah, another kill, Daryl said. It even looked like Roland. I have to call him and tell him I killed him. Uh, I actually kind of like that line. Daryl picked his phone, picked up his phone, and dialed Roland's number. He called, no answer. Well, I guess I'll just go to his house then, to tell him that I killed him in a fucking video game. <laughs> Stupid people. Daryl got in his car and drove to Roland's house. And he arrived. There were cops all over the area. He saw a police officer put a man in pure, with a pure white face. Daryl drove up to one of the cops. What happened here? Daryl asked. That man in the police car killed two people, a teenager named Roland and his stepmom. Daryl drove home, not saying another word. He went upstairs to his own room. Once arriving at his home, he went upstairs. Well, well, wait a minute. Hang on a second. He went upstairs to his own room once arriving at, at his home. He went upstairs to turn off his ex. Why the fuck would you need to repeat that? The Xbox on his TV in blood, red letters. It said, you decided. Now it's someone. If you enjoyed this and would like to hear more stories like these, please go to www.youtube.com slash the voice of nightmares. Don't forget to give my video a like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. Also, you can follow me now on social media sites such as Twitter, Mr. Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Wiki, and Instagram. Last but not least, all stories, art, and music are owned by their respective authors. Links are available in the description below.